good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and I was always told I had a voice radio. So today, we are looking at what is good in Japan. This last weekend, Japan had a very large tournament. There were over 1,200 players. And when Japan has a large tournament, I think it's my responsibility to explain to you what's good in Japan at the moment. Now, the graphic on screen does come from the lovely David Hockman. He of LimitlessTCG.com. Because David helps us out with Japanese stuff quite a lot. Because David's awesome. But the thing that I really, really need to remind you of here. Japan is playing in the same set that we are. Yes, they've got the Evolution GXs like Jolteon. And yeah, they've got some sets like Dark Order that we haven't had. But other than that, it's basically the same format. In like a month or two, this will be our exact format. So it is absolutely worth considering. And the first thing we need to mention, Zapdos Jirachi is far and away by a huge margin. The best, biggest deck in the format. 25 of the top 64 decks were Zapdos. 12 of them without Jolteon. And 13 of them with Jolteon. Now, I'm going to be bringing you a big video about why this is the best deck in the format in the very near future. But for the time being, you've got the Jolteon that does 80 damage if you became active this turn. And then, of course, you've got Electro Power, which does an extra 30 damage. And you've got Electric Charger that flip two coins for each one. You get an Electro Power back. So this adds up super quickly in a non-GX Pokemon, giving up one prize. Jirachi's ability lets you look at the top five cards of your deck, find a trainer card and put it into your hand. And bearing in mind, you need to get Jolteon out of the active every turn. So what you do is you attack with Jolteon, switch to Jirachi, use the ability, retreat using a skateboard, and you're off and rolling. It's great. Then you add in Jolteon that can do really good damage for very little energy, and it is just the best deck in the format. And it's not close. It is not even close. The second biggest was Zoroark decks with 11. So when I say this is the best deck in the format, I mean it is hands down, running away, no question, the best deck in the format. Now I'm going to put a bunch of links in the description. I made a video about Jirachi Zapdos without Jolteon. I'll pop a link to that in the description. I've done a video about Jolteon. I'll pop that in the description but the first and most important takeaway at the moment is this is number one and there's no close number two number two is zoroark variants and look we've been talking about zoroark for a long time zoroark's got the trade ability whereby you discard a card from your hand and draw two it's got riotous beating that does 20 damage for each pokemon you've got in play Mostly it's combined with Lycan Rock, who can pull a Pokemon off the bench, as well as having a really good GX attack that does 50 damage for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. And if you play it with Fighting Energy, you've got a nice counter for the Mirror Match. We did see one copy of this with Lucario. The, I mean, when it evolves, it does lots of damage for one energy. It's a decent fighting type attacker. It's good in the Mirror. You do lose the... Bloodthirsty Eyes ability, although you can play that as well, but you gain a good amount of damage for a single energy, and a GX attack, which is also quite good, treble the amount of damage as is on you. And then there was one played with Sylveon, because Sylveon is just disruption, and this really strikes me as more of a Sylveon deck than anything else, because essentially here you can just sit there and go, ha ha ha, I'm disrupting you with Sylveon. And it's kind of funny. I should also mention that as much as Jirachi was the most played deck, and it really was, it was actually a Zoroark Lycan Rock piloted by Daichi Shimada that did win the tournament as a whole. Zapdos Jirachi got as high as third place piloted by Tomoki Yamada. So there we go. Now after that, we see a lot of viable decks. The biggest of which is Rayquaza. Now, Rayquaza does lots of damage based on how much grass and lightning basic energy you've got in play. 
It's also got a nice ability that can accelerate energy and a GX attack that discards your hand and draws 10. But really here it smashes if you've got lots of energy in play. So what we need to do here is make sure we're getting energy on the field. Now of the 9 Rayquaza decks that made top cut, 6 of them were played with Vikavolt. Strong Charge allows you to attach a Lightning and a Grass Energy during your turn. And 3 of them were played with Naganadal. Naganadal accelerates energy from the discard and then Rayquaza smashes. Slightly more difficult to get the energy on with Rayquaza here, but it is doable. It is possible to do so. It's just, it's a little bit awkward to be honest with you. Vikavolt probably the better option here. There were five Blacephalon Naganadal. Now, bearing in mind, the last tournament in Japan we looked at with over a thousand players, Blacephalon Naganadal was the biggest, bestest deck. What happened? People counted it. Metagame shift and move on, ladies and gentlemen. That's just what happens. Zapdos, Jirachi. I mean, you're trying to lost zone free energy to take out every Zapdos. That's 18 energy lost zoned. While they're two hit KOing you quite easily, it matches with it very well. But we still saw five of these in the top 64. Naganadal gets energy on the field, Blacephalon lost zones them to do lots of damage, and then of course they've got B-String. B-String does a great job of just accelerating energy as long as you've got three or four prizes remaining, your opponent does. So, okay, that took a little bit of a fall. We still see free Ultra Necrozma Malamar. Well, this is a deck that seems to have really fallen out of favor outside of Japan. In Japan, it is holding on, and Yoshiyuki Yamaguchi did actually get second place with this. So as much as there's only three of these in top 64, one of them did make it all the way to second. And here you just accelerate energy with Malamar and use Ultra Necrozma to do huge damage. 60 damage for each Psychic Energy discarded. You have a Metal on there and you discard all the basic Psychic. It's a really powerful, hard-hitting kind of deck. And it's still hanging on. Three copies of Boswell Lycanroc. I mean, this is another deck that seems to... We don't be, seem to be able to decide whether it's good or not. But Boswell does good damage for little energy. Diancy Prism Star means you do even better damage for little energy. And then Lycanroc pulls Pokemon up from the bench. The advantage you have with Lycanroc here is that it's very easy to attack with it. Because you're playing all the fighting energy. Although, unlike the Zoroark build, you do lose double colorless energy here. Which is a little bit relevant. Just because it's harder to get a Claw Slash off. Again, you've got Beast Ring to accelerate energy. And that's good. It helps out your Boswell. We see two copies of Greninja Meganium Swampert Slacking. Now, this is a deck that takes way too much explanation, so I will pop a link to my video about it in the description, but extremely quickly. Attack with Greninja, hopefully with a zero card deck, using super boost energy, the only energy you play. Stick a slacking in the active to block abilities. Use Swampert to draw the Greninja back, and play it down immediately using Meganium with the super boost energy attached to it again. It is a genius deck, and two of them made it into top 64. But so did two Persimian. I know. I love Persimian. It just won't go away. You've got the Persimian that does more damage for each Persimian in play. And then the other Persimian that boosts your Persimian against Evolve Pokemon even more. Now, I did do a video about this new Persimian. So again, I'll pop a link in the description. But just like the Zapdos decks, this uses Jirachi to get going, to search out that rescue stretcher that you need to recover Persimian all the time, to search out your energy lotto in order to be able to get rolling and getting all of your energy. It's brilliant. It's so good. I, I didn't expect it to still be good at this point, but you know, evidently it still is. And then we see two copies of Gardevoir, Obviously played with Alolan Ninetales just to help you set up. This is really just a... It's Gardevoir. 
God of War's got a great ability that accelerates energy. God of War hits for big damage if you can pile energy on. God of War has been since literally released when it, might I remind you, won the World Championships. It's been great. It continues to be so. And Alolan Ninetales really does give it the speed it needs in order to be able to compete in the modern format. Although worth noting... It also has a really good GX attack that one hit KOs Ultra Beast like, I don't know, Blacephalon and Boswell. And that's really useful in a deck that can accelerate energy and play Psychic Energy. One copy of Decidueye and one copy of Metagross both played with Alolan Ninetales because the rule here is very, very simple. If you want to play a Stage 2 that isn't Vika Vault, you've got to be playing Alolan Ninetales. The Greninja GX deck I mentioned, of course it played Alolan Ninetales. And then humorously it played Ace Roller, so you could pick it up so it wasn't left on the field. <laughs> it's just what you need nowadays. If you're not playing Alolan Ninetales, you're probably not getting your Stage 2 set up. Decidueye just drops damage all around the field. Metagross hits for 150, retreats, recovers its energy, uses Max Potion, and so on and so forth. This is a very varied top 64 meta game. But what I really love here is that Japan went from, oh my god, Rayquaza's the best deck, it's crushing everything, and it was. It won in all three age divisions at the first opportunity, to, oh my god, Blacephalon, Naganadal is crushing everything, and it was. It was by far the best deck. And now we're on, oh my god, Zapdos Jirachi is crushing everything. And it is, it was by far the biggest deck. It doubled, in fact, more than doubled the next biggest deck. And you know what? At the next big Japanese tournament, when we've got a couple or at least one new set, I'm sure we'll be right back there again. And this makes me delighted. Alrighty then, ladies and gentlemen, that's what's good in Japan, that's what's winning in Japan. Now it's time for you guys to tell me which of these decks you're excited about, which of these decks you like, and which of these decks do you think are going to be good when we start playing them when Team Up comes out. Go nuts in the comment section, ladies and gentlemen, but please do remember the rule. Be nice, would ya? And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio where you can do exactly that. And do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash Wossy Plays for Keyforge and Transformers and more Wossy action. But by far the most important thing as always is to look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching... PTCG Radio.